In the meantime, we are following the latest reaction after Russian President Vladimir Putin's speech where he touted his country's invincible nuclear weapons. Yeah, he threatened the West with various missiles that he says can't be intercepted and could outsmart the U.S. Elizabeth Palmer has the latest from London. President Putin's threats came in his annual State of the Nation address and in both language and tone recalled the very chilliest days of the Cold War. Speaking to lawmakers, President Putin warned that Russia had developed an array of powerful new weapons with nuclear capability. The showpiece? A new missile that was nuclear-powered, he claimed, and had unlimited range. So missile defense systems would be useless against it. In an interview with NBC, the Russian president was asked to confirm the new missile was actually operational. Now, do you have a workable ICBM that's powered by nukes that, that you've tested successfully? All of those tests were successful. It's just each of these weapon systems is at a different stage of readiness. Not a straight answer. And Western analysts doubt there's anything revolutionary in the Russian arsenal. Anyway, Western intelligence agencies keep a close eye on Russia's weapons development. Pentagon spokeswoman Dana White. We're not surprised by the statements, and the American people should rest assured that we are fully prepared. Russia has long had a fearsome arsenal, but it's old and needs updating. The innovations Putin mentioned in his speech, like the unmanned submarine that could eventually fire a nuclear warhead, are part of a modernization program, but not the start of a dangerous new arms race. It's natural to be worried about that. I don't see it uh, as a, on the sort of edge of our seats in terms of a potential nuclear conflict in any way, shape or form, but we do need to be vigilant about this. One other thing to keep in mind, Mr. Putin is facing a presidential election in less than three weeks, and looking and talking tough goes down very well with Russian voters. Anne-Marie, Reid. Elizabeth Palmer, thank you. Well, for more on this, we want to bring in CBSN contributor Willis Sparks. He writes for Signal, a newsletter produced by G Zero Media. And we're talking all about this Russia situation. So, very clever for the, the newsletter. Russia's got 99 problems, but lack of effective nuclear deterrent ain't one. Uh, your rhyming skills are subpar. Uh, Jay-Z's attorneys <laughs> want to talk to you. And then other than that... Artistic license. <laughs> other, than, other than that, you know, what has been the overall reaction to this speech by Putin, complete with, you know, um, that the graphic of the missiles heading somewhere towards the U.S., I guess? I'm sure that the reaction in Russia has been very positive. It was an impressive show. This is his 14th State of the Union address, so you got to find new ways to dress these things up. Someone said, look, here's how Steve Jobs puts on a show. You put a big video screen behind you. You do crazy, impressive things to wow the audience after you've been talking about poverty for the last hour and what you're going to do about that. This is much ado about nothing on about 10 different levels. And the reason that I, I made that point about, you know, there's no issue with nuclear deterrence. Nothing has changed since the Cold War. For decades, the U.S. and Russia have enough nuclear weapons that if they wanted to, they could destroy each other's countries many times over. They'd be committing suicide if they do it. Not this, what, this missile system, whatever stage of development it's really in, doesn't change that in any way. Mm -hmm. Putin is trying to persuade the Russian people that this is our ultra-savvy, high-tech, modern way around U.S. missile defense. Okay, first of all, U.S. missile defense does not deter Russia. Russia has way more nuclear weapons than it needs to overwhelm the nuclear defenses that the U.S. has have been set up to counter threats from Iran and North Korea. So it doesn't change that in any way. Right. But it's a, it's a great show. I'm sure that, you know, the people in the audience were really impressed by this. Yeah. But frankly, Putin's up for re-election in a little over two weeks. We all know he's going to win. Yeah. But he really needs to build excitement around the election because he wants to drive turnout. His goal is not just he wants 70 plus percent of the vote, which he's very likely to get. He also wants 70 percent turnout, which is very much in doubt. 
because there's a lot of young people in Russia that just don't care about politics. They, they don't necessarily have an opinion of Putin versus this other politician or that politician. They just don't care about politics. Mm -hmm. And Putin wants to generate a lot of excitement, generate a lot of buzz right before Russians go to the polls, drive turnout so that he's got whatever bit more of a mandate than he uh, than he thinks he has right and, now. Yeah, and to really. that end, it sounds very odd that they're going to do this, but you mentioned a bit a bit ago off camera that they're offering prizes to people who take selfies of themselves there was, at the ballot box. There was a proposal last month. I don't know whether they followed through on it, but the Russian government actually was offering uh, prizes, like Apple products, for people who took selfies at the polling station. This is the most cynical way imaginable mm. to deal with the demographic that President Putin is worried about most, which is young people. Are young people still bought into the, the Putin vision of the future? It, it's not even so much about how, what the numbers really are this weekend, but he's looking ahead to his legacy. Mm -hmm. He's become an older man now. He's been in power a long time. And he really wants to make the case in Russia and around the world that young people in Russia are impressed with the Putin project and really motivated to come out and support it. So it's not enough that he wins, he has to be well liked too? Well, sure. Right. I mean, <laughs> what else is there? I mean, right. the actual election is going to be boring. The opposition is pretty clownish. You yeah. know, the, the only person that... Or being poisoned. Well, the only, the only person who could really embarrass the president, Alexei Navalny, is going to be in jail throughout the election. Now, mm -hmm. He's not going to win the election. He's not going to come anywhere close to beating Putin. Mm -hmm. But he might say things that are embarrassing for the president. The more attention Navalny is able to draw to issues like corruption in Russia, mm -hmm. the more embarrassing it gets for Putin. So he doesn't want to deal with that. He would rather just run against the seven, you know, small fry candidates he's running against, produce an overwhelming victory. Right, a veneer and, of actual competition. Yeah, it's kind of Cold War logic. It's sort of mm -hmm. shock and awe in a political sense using, it's not that different from the parades that used to go through Red Square. Look how big our weapons are. Hey, we're gonna have one of those. Exce yeah. Except that the Russians <laughs> don't have Soviet military reach. They don't have mm -hmm. Soviet political ideological influence mm -hmm. in the world. This is Cold Warriors running a country trying to create the good old days of we're ready to stand up to the United States. Does aggressive talk like this have an impact globally um, and does this kind of talk put us on a course for Cold War or is it or is it literally just talk yeah because people kind have talked about like a new Cold War particularly in light of the attacks that we've had on you know our election the cyber attacks that we're sort of seeing not just on the election but cyber attacks elsewhere as yeah. well and we've talked a lot about privacy and, and the vulnerabilities that we have and people have talked about mm. whether we are seeing a new Cold War I know you said nothing's changed yeah but well First of all, maybe globally it raises the temperature at a time when we're talking about North Korean nuclear weapons and President Trump is threatening the Iran nuclear deal, which could create another round of crisis with Iran. It just raises the temperature generally and calls into question the idea that the U.S. has predominant military power. But, but th this is not a new Cold War in the sense that, again, Russia is not the Soviet Union. President Trump wants to increase defense spending in the U.S. And the extra money that President Trump is asking for, just that little bit extra, is more money than the entire Russian defense budget. This is not U.S. versus the Soviet Union. Russia does not have ideological appeal in every region of the world. It doesn't have friends that are lining up to join in the big project. Mm -hmm. This is cold warriors in Russia that are trying to create the feeling of the Cold War for people because that was a time when people living in Russia could be proud of the fact that no country in the world was more powerful than their country. In 2018, that's not true anymore, but keep the illusion going for another two weeks mm -hmm. and maybe it boosts your turnout on election day. Right, right. Okay, we're going to hit up hard numbers. Um, should I go? Should I just start with 49,780,000? 49,780,000 people, seven, sorry, yeah, living in the United States. Almost 50 million people were born in another country. You, I my am. lovely wife and her entire lovely family, mm -hmm. at a time when the U.S. Citizens and Immigration Service is saying, removing the language about nation of immigrants yeah. from the language, 
We are a nation of immigrants, may it ever be so. Almost 50 million people living in this country were born somewhere else. Yeah, that was sort of a subtle little thing that happened without much fanfare. To what end, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. Another couple of numbers. There's a big election in Italy this week, and we thought it was noteworthy that the leaders of two of the three parties that are liable to come in in the top three actually can't serve in public office because they've been convicted of felonies. Oh Beppe Grillo of the Five Star Movement was convicted of manslaughter for a car accident in the 1980s, and Silvio Berlusconi of Forza Italia was convicted of tax fraud. So the parties are going to do well, but two of the three biggest leaders can't actually serve. And uh, the final number is if you're the president of Venezuela, and you're going through crisis, and you want to make sure that officers in the military are loyal to you, what do you do? You promote them. Fifteen years ago, there were 70 generals in the Venezuelan army. Today, there are 1,200, according to the editor wow. of El Nacional. Uh, newspaper. So just make everybody a general. You and, get a uh, title. You get a yeah, title. Exactly. You get a it's title. It's a little yeah. top heavy, yeah. but you know what? It works for Maduro at least for the moment. That's incredible. He, he needs all the help he can get, I suppose. Yeah. Some interesting right. numbers, yeah. some disturbing numbers as well. Will yeah. Sparks, thank you very much. We Thanks very them. much. And you can always check out all of these stories by subscribing to the Signal newsletter. Just sign up for it at g0media.com. You can just head to the homepage and click subscribe to newsletter.